on, get in there. Get in there, go on. Get in there, you rotten thing. Dad, what are you doing? Get in there, go on. Dad, what are you doing? Hmm? What? From out there, it sounds like you're trying to train a sheepdog. <laughs> no, it's this retracting cord. It's not. It's not what? It's not retracting. Why not? I don't know. Maybe it's frightened of the dark. <laughs> what a useless thing. I'm supposed to stand on this button and it's supposed to go in there and hide in its little hole like a moray eel. Dad, just coil it up. No, I have paid for a retracting power cord and a retracting power cord I will have. Typical, isn't it? Things these days break down after five minutes. Well, in that case, the warranty shouldn't have expired. I mean, how long have you had it anyway? Seven years. <laughs> it's been seven years? Yeah, it has. Seven years, I remember now. I bought it for Jenny's second birthday. You're kidding. No, she used to have hours of fun with it. She'd sit there in a little baby bouncer, pushing the button, watching this cord flash across the room, dragging tables and chairs with it. <laughs> hours of fun. You're joking. No, there is a whole world of entertainment in a retracting power cord. Get in there, you rotten thing. Hi, Dad. My son. Been driving, Deb. How'd you know that? I noticed the cushions were missing. <laughs> Dad, can we get a smaller car? This one's too tall for me. I can barely see over the dashboard. Well, I'll just take the seats out of it and you can stand up to drive. <laughs> it's not funny, Dad. I mean, there are actually people running alongside me to see if there was anybody in it. I see you're still driving at breakneck speed, then. Safety is a prime consideration when driving. So is arriving the same day you set out. <laughs> but I agree with you, you shouldn't speed. Yeah, but she could go faster than walking pace. <laughs> it would have been faster for me to piggyback Jenny to Katrina's. You did get her there, all right. Yes, Dad, but will you talk to her? Yeah, why? What's she doing? Well, every time I get behind the wheel, she starts going, Oh, my God, the semi-trailer, the semi-trailer! <laughs> yeah, she won't get in the car with Deb unless she's got a Medibank card. Oh, all right, I'll have a word with her. Oh, I'd give up on this thing. You can't get the cord in again, eh? You guessed it. You did that on purpose, didn't you? I hate you. <laughs> Just remember, next time you want a feed of electricity, I pay the bills. <laughs> Incidentally, Deb, I didn't hear you back down the drive. No, no, I left it in the street. You know I can't do backwards. Then how on earth did you get your licence? Well, when it came to the reverse parking test, the examiner told me to park between two cars. Sir? Well, so the owners were watching, and when they saw the L plates, they came out and parked the cars 100 yards apart. <laughs> I nearly didn't make it even then. Oh, by the way, you did put the car alarm on. No, so I didn't. It's only outside. Deborah, it takes car thieves 20 seconds to break into a car. But, Dad, in that car, it takes them 10 minutes to reach the end of the road. I mean, you could give them a head start and run him down. I assume that you do use the alarm when you take the car to the shops. Of course I don't. You don't? Dad, it's too embarrassing. What do you mean, embarrassing? Well, I always forget to turn it off, and then when I get back in, it starts going, oop -a, oop -a, oop -a. <laughs> I mean, it's embarrassing because everybody stares at me. Everybody's supposed to stare at you because it's a car alarm. Well, nobody ever comes up to me and says, excuse me, little girl, are you stealing this car? I mean, what's the point? The point is it discourages thieves from stealing the car. Dad, who'd want to steal that car? Well, they could use it as a getaway car. Get away from what? I mean, the only thing you'd get away from would be an old age pensioner in a wheelchair. <laughs> well, they could go joyriding. Joyriding? In that, it's like driving a blancmange. <laughs> You'd better joyride out of the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, why don't you put the alarm on the Hoover? I take it from all this, Simon, that you don't use the alarm either. Oh, are you kidding? I don't believe this. Could somebody here please tell me why I spent 400 bucks having a car alarm installed? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because you love toys. <laughs> well, scoff if you will. Scoff, scoff. <laughs> ha ha. Now scoff off and put the alarm on. All right. Hey, Simon, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, mate. Oh, God, it's one of the Blues Brothers. <laughs> no, it's me, Mr. Kelly. Oh. And this time I've really got it. Well, don't give it to me. Now, I've decided what I'm going to be when I leave school. What? Rich. That's a start. <laughs> yeah, see, I figure the hard part is making the decisions. From here on, it's all downhill. Well, now you've figured out what, how about how? You're going to be a rich inventor. You're going to invent things. You are. Yeah, I've already started. Look at these. I don't know how to tell you this, Nudge, but we've had sunglasses for quite some time now. Ah, not like these. I'm going to put windscreen wipers on them. Why? Because when you're wearing them and it rains, you can wipe the rain off. Nudge, has it ever occurred to you that when it's raining, people don't wear sunglasses? They don't? No. Oh, I never thought of that. Oh. Hey, Mr. Kelly, would you sign these, please? Mm, sure. Oh, uh, Betty, why am I signing these? Well, it's my new system. But these are greeting cards. No, they're not. They're thank you cards. Well, who am I thanking and why? 
Well, I thought it might be nice if we sent a little thank you to all the people who've sent us checks. Why? <laughs> Only my mother always said if somebody gives you a present, you should send them a little thank you. Betty, I cannot send my clients cards with happy little bears playing in the flowers on them. <laughs> I thought they were nice. Oh, and, and look at the verse on this one. Yeah, I like that one too. <laughs> Thank you for your present. It gave me such a lift. So nice of you to think of me and send this little check. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even rhyme. Well, it used to, but I crossed off uh, gift and put check. Cause it's a check, isn't it? Oh. I mean, well, I can't be expected to think of everything. What's this? Oh, th 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 that, that was because we needed six. What do you mean? Well, see, they only had five of the thank you cards, but you got one of those free with every five you bought. It's a birthday card. Yeah, but it's got a little bear on it, like the others. <laughs> and what gem of literary endeavour am I sending to this client? <clears throat> a very happy birthday. I wish you many more. You're getting such a big boy now, and next year you'll be four. <laughs> Who am I sending this to? Oh, the town clerk. He'll love it. Yeah, well, I thought you'd just cross it out and put... Next year, you'll be 54. <laughs> Wonderful. And then I can go to his party and I'll come back with a little basket of lollies and a slice of cake. <laughs> Betty, get rid of these. But, but, but Mr. Get Kelly... rid of them and type up normal receipts. Well, can I put a little beer on them? No bears. <laughs> I'm going to hang this one What? Nothing. <laughs> yes, it was. You said something. I said I'm going to hang on to this one for a special occasion. What? What special occasion? Never you mind. Let me see that. Oh. Your friendship means so much to me in oh so many ways. I sent this little card to say thank you for the raise. <laughs> I've changed that one already. Burn it. Mr Kelly, why? Because you'll never get a chance to use it. I'm not giving you a raise. In that case, I'll just have to result to my... Alma mater. Your what? My final threat. Your ultimatum. <laughs> that too. Well, here goes in. What are you doing? I am ringing John Laws. And this time, this time I'm really going to tell him on you. Look, Betty, we've been through all this before. I don't care. It's ringing. Well, let it ring. I'm not worried. Well, you should be. His show goes out to the walls of everyone. Even Bob Hawke will know how cruel you are. Bob Hawke doesn't care about me, and I don't care about John Laws. <gasps> Hello, Mr. Laws. Oh, look, who is in your father? Ring him in your own time. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kelly, I'm going out for a while. Could, could I take the car, please? What for? For a haircut. Car doesn't need a haircut. <laughs> Haircuts from me. Yeah, well, don't be long. I won't. <laughs> I know hairdressers' appointments. You could be hours. With hair like yours, you could be days. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, my hair grew on company time, and I think it's only fair. <laughs> well, make sure you get the part cut that grew on company time. <laughs> Uh, oh, all right. And remember to put the alarm on. I will. It's terrible, isn't it, the way you need alarms in the city? Yeah. Yeah, we never needed them in the country. That's because country people are honest. No, that's because country people have got blue heelers in the back seat. <laughs> that way they always know if someone's tried to break into their car. How? Well, they find a hand next to the dog. And they... Go, and don't forget the alarm. I won't. <laughs> oh, hi, kids. Have a good day. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi Mr. Kelly. Uh, just the man I want to see. Hello, Nudge. Oh, Nudge, don't start again. Oh, it's a great idea. It's a terrible idea. Yeah, well, true genius is never recognised. Remember, they laughed at Groucho Marx. Nudge. Yeah, Mr. Kelly? They were supposed to laugh at Groucho Marx. <laughs> oh, yeah. Never thought of that. Anyway, I bet you won't laugh at my idea. Oh, no. Don't tell me he's come up with another invention. Got it in one. OK, let's hear it. A silent car alarm. <laughs> a silent car alarm. I knew you'd love it. What is the point of having a car alarm that doesn't make any noise? Well, you know how car alarms go off in the middle of the night and everyone wakes up and gets annoyed at you? Yeah. Well, this one doesn't. <laughs> Great idea, right? What makes you think anyone would want a car alarm that doesn't make any noise? Oh, it makes a noise, but it's pitched at a point where normal people can't hear it. Oh. <laughs> you mean only Betty and you can hear it? Oh, you mean only you can hear it? That's well, every dog within two miles hears it, 
and wakes up and barks. Then you know someone's stealing your car. <laughs> See, no one will know it's yours, so they won't get mad at you. Judge, if nobody knows it's my car, how do I know it's my car? Oh, well, it's not perfect yet, but I'll work on it. Oh, Mr Kelly, oh, there's something terrible's happened. Oh, God, it's the other half of the nutty squirrels. <laughs> Honey, this is Tom, it's really terrible. Yeah, uh, what's happened? Well, when I got to the hairdressers, it was our half day off and, and I couldn't get my hair done. Well, what a disaster. <laughs> God, that's really right up there with the loss of the Titanic, isn't it? <laughs> Well, look, if you didn't get your hair done, what kept you? Well, then I ran into Helga at the shopping centre. She's buying a chest expander. <laughs> Helga doesn't need a chest expander. Helga's chest has already expanded past normal safety limits. <laughs> Helga's chest is expanded to... Whoa! Wee! Go away. Just going. Anyway, Betty, so far I can't see anything terrible in your hairdresser being closed and Helga buying a chest expander. Well, there was one other thing. Did, did I mention that the car was stolen? The car has been stolen? Well, I, I thought I didn't mention it. You, you didn't put the car alarm on, did you? Well, of course I did. Well, didn't you hear it going, Uba, Uba, Uba? Oh, is that what that noise is? <laughs> That, but see, no one else was paying any attention to it, and I, I didn't want to get involved. <laughs> God, you'll never guess what's happened. What? The car has been stolen. Not, Not the Volvo. <laughs> yes, someone has stolen it. Well, never mind that. If we hurry down to the shopping centre, we'll probably catch him before he gets out of the parking lot. <laughs> oh, how can they do this to me? I mean, what kind of people are they? I think they call them thieves, Dad. <laughs> and you should never trust them. I mean... <laughs> What, what would their parents say if they knew? I mean, what, what kind of family would they come from? A rich one. Do you have to do that? Yep. Oh, look, you make the place smell like a dental surgery. It soothes my nerves. Well, maybe I should do yours. Take your sock off and put your foot up here. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going out tonight. Oh, Deborah, how, how could you even consider going out and enjoying yourself tonight? Our, our car is out there in the hands of thieves. Life goes on, Dad. And anyway... Oh, hell. Aha. Uh -huh. It's finally sunk in, has it? Yeah, I was going to borrow the car. <laughs> no, you're not. It's my turn for the car tonight. But you had it on Saturday. If it was your turn for it on Sunday and you didn't use it, you, you lose your go. Dad, can you tell Simon it's my turn to take the car out tonight? Oh, that's not very fair. You, you kids really cheese me off, you know. Just because you've got your licences, it doesn't mean you've got an automatic right to the car. It's a privilege. I mean, you just, you've just got to stop assuming you can take the car whenever you want it. Uh, but, Dad... No, don't... Just forget about but, Dad. I mean, does it ever occur to you that I might want to use the car tonight? Well, I do. And in this house, I decide who gets the car and when. Oh, uh, not quite, Mr Kelly. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I think the thieves have decided for you this time. <laughs> see? See? See the problems this causes? Now we're fighting about the use of a car we don't even have anymore. Anyway, nobody's using the car tonight, but I'm not using it before either you two are not using it. Do I make myself clear? No. no. Yeah. See, I'm upset. I'm, I'm talking rubbish and, and Nudge understands me. Dad, calm down. Look, I'll do your nails. That should calm you down. Martin, I'm sorry. I got here as soon as I could. What's oh, the emergency? Anne, thank God you're here. The car's been stolen. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Now, what's the emergency? <laughs> the car's been stolen. Will you stop saying that and tell me what is the emergency? That is. What is? I just told you. I'm sorry, I must have missed it while you were telling me the car had been stolen. <laughs> Debbie, perhaps you could tell me what is the emergency? The car's been stolen. That's it? Yes. Goodbye. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going? Martin, you rang me gabbling about some terrible emergency. Now, I half expected to find Colonel Gaddafi somewhere here in your living room. Now you tell me it's just a stolen car. Just a stolen car? Just a stolen car? And that's not important. Martin, do you realise in the state of New South Wales, someone steals a car every three minutes? Well, you ought to find him and stop him, Sergeant. <laughs> have you reported it to the police? Of course I have. Who? You. Me? Yes. Have you mentioned it to anyone else? Well, I thought you could pass it on to the others. I didn't realise I had to tell you all one at a time. <laughs> I mean, don't you police ever talk to each other up there in the squad room? You've all got radios. What are you using for, ordering lunch? <laughs> Can we continue this in private? Oh, but I was enjoying this. Shut up. Let's go through to the office. Mr Kelly, I wouldn't push her too far. Remember, she carries a gun. Now, look here. 
I'm a busy woman. More than that, I'm a busy policewoman. More than that, I'm a busy detective sergeant woman. So? A detective sergeant is a senior officer. Oh, so you're telling me now that my crime isn't good enough for you? Yes. <laughs> now, I suggest you bring the local station. This is a job for the uniform branch and the mobile patrols. I'm sure they will do everything they can in their power to recover your allegedly stolen vehicle. Allegedly? Yes. But don't hold your breath. Now call them. All right, I want to use your radio. No. Why not? Because it's mine. <laughs> that is a public radio. You are a public servant and I'm a public. Now give me the radio. Touch it and I'll break your fingers. Oh, oh. So it's police brutality now, is it? In another word, yes. Now pick up that phone and use it. Very well. And I'm sure the police will do everything they possibly can to help you find your stolen property, sir. Thank you, officer. That's the least I can do. It certainly is. Right then. Right. Fine. Yes, fine. Goodbye. Leonard Teal wouldn't have behaved like that. We still going out Saturday night? Yes. Yes, fine? Yes, fine. Yes, right? Right. See you Saturday? You're paying for the cab. Hi, Dad. Feeling any better? Hmm, not really. Why have you got that photo of the car? Oh, I'm going to give it to the police. Usually when something goes missing, they put a photo in the paper. Dad, they do that for people, not Volvos. Well, it's best to be prepared. Boy, it certainly looks shiny there, doesn't it? Yeah, this photo was taken the first day we got it. Yeah, look, and the number plate isn't all bent. What number plate? What bent? Uh, nothing. Nothing. It, it'll probably look like that when we, when we get it back from the thieves. Oh, don't remind me about the thieves. Oh, come on, Dad. We came in here to cheer you up. Look at the bright side. The car's been stolen. What's the bright side? We might never get it back. <laughs> so, so we can get a new one. I mean, you're insured, weren't you? Oh, that's wonderful. That's lovely. The car's just been stolen, the garage is hardly cold yet, and you two want to replace it. Life goes on, Dad. We need a new car. You're heartless. You've got no feelings. That car was... It was like one of the family. Which one? <laughs> We've had it ever since you were a little girl. She's still a little girl. Shut up. Do you spare even a thought for it? No. I mean, God knows what's happening to it. It's out there in the hands of thieves. They're, they're, they're probably going from drive to reverse while the car is still moving. Oh, shouldn't you do that? What? <laughs> Or, or they're probably spinning the wheels at stoplights. No, it doesn't do that. <laughs> anyway, Dad, uh, think positive. It's, it's time we had a new car. Or even just an extra one. Oh, no, hang on. We're not having two cars. We have enough arguments with one. Dad, they didn't make a lot of sense. If you want sense, go and find a man whose car hasn't been stolen and violated. Oh, come on, Dad. Cheer up. Come and have a look at some of the brochures we've got. Oh, maybe you're right. Let's take a look. Here we go. Now, how do you like that one? Mm, not bad. Which one's that? Corolla, isn't it cute? 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 Who wants cute? That's a roller skate with a motor. <laughs> yeah, Dad, this is what you want. The Brock Commodore. What? A hoon car? It's a highly tuned piece of racing machinery. Wouldn't expect you to appreciate it. Simon, do we really need a highly tuned piece of racing machinery to go and get the milk? <laughs> it does 140 in second. Well, we'd certainly be back in time before the tea got cold. I suppose it does 100 in reverse. Reverse? You don't care about reverse. I have to back the car in for you. What's happening? I was just saying how Debbie can't back the car in without taking out the letterbox. Hey! Hey, great idea! I've had a nudge flash! A nudge flash? Maybe I should leave the room. Uh, inspiration. Eat inspiration. A new invention. What is it? For drivers like Debbie, rubber letterboxes. <laughs> You're mad. Even better, rubber cars. Rubber cars. Yeah, in case there's another driver as bad as Debbie. One more word and you'll be an ex nudge. All right, if you don't like that one, how about rubber grass? Rubber grass? Why rubber grass? Oh, well, I'd have all that rubber left over from the letterboxes and cars. <laughs> be a shame to waste it. What possible use could you have for rubber grass? Well, it'd be soft to walk on and you'd never have to cut it. Nudge, they've already invented synthetic grass. Why ain't I ever told these things? How am I supposed to get rich if people keep inventing my ideas before I have them? Oh, yes, thank you, then. Oh, I will. Oh, yeah, I always do. Bye. Oh, who was that, Betty? John Laws. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't ring him and talk about your raise. Oh, am I getting one? Oh, no, you're not. But how dare you ring him up and discuss our private business over the radio? Oh, I didn't ring him about the raise. Oh, well, what did you ring him about? The car? And it's all fixed now. What is all fixed now? Mr. Laws will get on the radio and he'll go really cranky on those thieves. What on earth will that accomplish? Well, they'll feel really ashamed of themselves. <laughs> now, never underestimate the power of Mr. Laws. Well, you can depend on John Laws and I'll depend on the insurance. Um, did you finish that diagram of the scene of the theft? It's on your desk. 
I suppose with the insurance money, you'll be able to buy yourself a new car. No, it was an agreed value policy. What does that mean? It means the only other car I can afford to buy is another seven-year-old Volvo. <laughs> Betty, what is this? It's a drawing of the chemist. Why did you draw him? Well, because it happened outside his shop. And I, I couldn't draw the shop because I got the straight lines all wrong and I can't do bricks at all. <laughs> that's Helga there. Oh, yeah. And that's maybe Cider. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, Betty, where's the car? Back yours? You haven't put the car in. No. Why not? Because it was stolen. <laughs> If I put it back in, I think we got it back. Have we left our brain on the bedside table again, Betty? No. Morning, Martin. Hello, Betty. Oh, hello, Anne. Oh, Mr Big's on a tea break, is he? I beg your pardon? Big time crime is ground to a halt, so there's nothing to interest a senior police officer. <laughs> You're not making this very easy, are you? Oh, well, excuse I. I realised I was a little short with you yesterday, <laughs> so... I've come to apologise. Well, just saying you're sorry doesn't make it any better. Yes, it does. <laughs> you stay out of this argument. I'll have an argument with you in a minute. And to tell you that we found your car. Oh, that was quick. What was? Well, I only just told John was. <laughs> See, Mr Kelly? Oh, you found it. I knew I could rely on you. I knew you'd come through for me. Oh, really? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I was upset. Uh, tell me, where'd you find it? It wasn't used in a robbery, was it? Oh, God, don't tell me it's all smashed up. No. Oh. oh, they didn't take it out in the bush and burn it, did they? No. Oh, good. Well, where did you find it? In your driveway. Oh. The thieves were so bored with it, they brought it home. Could that be? Could that be my son Simon? Morning, Dad. Yes, it is my son Simon. The same Simon who promised, yes, promised, that he'd get up early and take his sister Jenny to the railway station. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, I forgot. You forgot? When Jenny spent ten minutes banging you on the head with a haversack to wake you up, you forgot why she was doing it? I'm a heavy sleeper. You're awake now. Yeah, that's because some idiot came home from the station, revved the car up in the drive, slammed the front door and turned every radio on in the house. Oh, I wonder who could have done that. Oh, I remember now. It was me. Dad, why did you do that? Well, I thought it'd be fun. What made you think that? Because that's what you did at 1 a.m. <laughs> thought there might be something in it. Where were you, anyway? I refuse to answer. On what grounds? On the grounds that I'm not awake enough to think of a good excuse? <laughs> well, never mind. I forgive you. You do? Yeah, I'm that kind of guy. Since when? Ah, da 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 What da 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 Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't put your buttery knife in the veggie mice. <laughs> Because we get little bits of butter all through it, and we end up with albino veggie mites. So? so, God meant Vegemite to be rich, lustrous, and black, not pale, pallid, and piebald. Yeah, this way it saves you time in the morning. How so? 
Because when you do it like this, you can put the butter and the Vegemite on at the same time. Yes, well, I don't wish to do that. Anyway, I forgive you again. You do? I do. You've been very forgiving this morning. Mmm. Because something wonderful is going to happen. What? What time is it? 7.21. Then it's about to happen. What is it? Something really, really good. Yeah, but what? Follow me and you shall see. That has getting up early in the morning affected your brain? No, 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 no. Just be patient, son. Why are we here? Good question, son. I suppose it's all part of God's master plan. <laughs> me here. Because any minute now, Debbie is going to scream. Why? Because she's in the shower. Oh? So, at 7.22, the hot water is going to run out. <laughs> Four, three, two. Oh, oh. slow. <laughs> because it happens to me at exactly this time every morning. But today I got up early and I experienced a pleasure I have not had in years. What was that? A hot shower. It was great. The water felt all hot on my skin. You've gone mad. Oh no, I haven't had a hot shower since you two crashed through puberty. <laughs> my showers are usually lukewarm by the time you've finished. They are. Yeah. For a while there, I thought they'd stop delivering hot water to this house. <laughs> then I thought, no, maybe my nerve ends are being dulled by age. What do you mean? Well, you know, as you get older, policemen get younger and showers get colder. <laughs> but today, it was hot and I feel rejuvenated. Debbie? Oh, Debbie, is everything all right? Who's the idiot? He's the one with the water. Oh, I wonder who could have done that. Let me think. Oh, I remember now. It was me. <laughs> I'll get you for this. Oh, what a beautiful morning. <laughs> that, that was really unkind. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Didn't you love it? <laughs> yeah, she did look a bit like a half pound hamster, didn't she? Dad, that wasn't fair. You always say I can't have a long shower in the morning. Yes, but you keep right on having them, don't you? No, no, I just thought I'd get my own back. Well, it was really thoughtless. Oh, no, I thought about it a lot. <laughs> well, how come you're allowed to have a long shower in the morning? I didn't have a long shower. You didn't? No, Deborah. I had three long showers. <laughs> I kept getting out and it felt so good, I kept getting right back in again. Serves you right, Deb. You're always in there for hours. Oh, look who's talking. I have to bang on the door every morning to get you out. <laughs> well, you certainly got out fast enough this morning. Should have heard yourself. Eh, hey, who you got out? <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> yes, it is. Dad. No, no, Simon's right. It's really funny. And do you know the funniest part of all? The part that Simon's forgotten? What? He hasn't had his shower yet. <laughs> uh, Betty, could you pass me those measurements, please? <laughs> Betty, could you... <laughs> Betty, I'm here to see you. Oh, Mr. Kelly, you shouldn't do that. Shouldn't do what? Well, you shouldn't wake me suddenly. You started my brain bouncing. <laughs> what are you talking about, brain bouncing? Well, it is. It's going kaboinka, kaboinka, from one side of my head to the other. That's because it's got so much room to move in there. <laughs> anyway, why are you so tired? Are you sick? No, I'm just worn out. It's my job. Oh, Betty, how could you be worn out from your job? You haven't done anything. You walked in here 40 minutes ago and crashed face down on the typewriter. How could that make you tired? No, no, not my this job, my night job. You're working at night? What are you doing? I'm a security guard. <laughs> you, a security guard? It's not funny. <laughs> You're right. It's hilarious. <laughs> they don't give you a gun, do they? No, I'm on probation. Hank's got the gun. Hank? Yeah, he's my boss. He's showing me the ropes. We're keeping the savage streets safe for the citizens of this great metropolis. Oh, says that in your training manual, does it? No, it says that on, on the door of the car. Oh, Betty and Hank. Sound like Batman and Robin. Yeah, that's what Hank says. Yeah, well, I hope he can be trusted with a gun. Oh, yeah, Hank's very responsible with all of them. All of what? All of his guns. Cool. How many has he got, for Pete's sake? Eight. Eight guns? Betty, you're driving around with a gunfight at the OK Corral. No, no, Hank's been properly trained. He says you should only ever draw your weapon uh, uh, in dire circumstances as a last resort or when you feel like it. <laughs> oh. Betty, what on earth prompted you to take on such a crazy job? It's not crazy. I get a free uniform and a company dog. A company dog? 
Yeah, well, only for a borrow. I've got to give him back every night. Oh, Mr. Kelly, you should see him. He's just beautiful. Yeah? <laughs> and what's the name of this beautiful dog? His name's Satan, and he's a great big black Doberman. <gasps> But when I first got him, I don't know what was wrong and who trained him, but he was really terrible. Yeah, he was? Yeah, he used to bark and growl and show his fangs, and it was really savage. But I fixed that quick enough. You did? Yep, I hit him on the nose with a rolled-up newspaper. <laughs> that did the trick. Betty, how on earth could a rolled-up newspaper calm a savage, ravening, blood-crazed Doberman? It's an old bushy trick Stan showed me. You wrap the newspaper around a spanner. <laughs> What did Hank have to say about that? Oh, he, he said it wouldn't work. But then I you know, started rubbing up against my leg and licking my ear. Who? Satan? No, Hank. <laughs> I had to hit him with the, with the newspaper, too. He learned a lot faster than Satan. Bethy, this is idiotic. You cannot spend your nights with a, with a gun-crazed sex maniac and a savage guard dog. I told you, he's not savage anymore. He's really gentle now. Well, that's even worse. I mean, what use is a gentle guard dog? They're supposed to be savage. Mr. Kelly, I need the money. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I, I know what you're doing. You're trying to shame me into giving you that raise, aren't you? Yes. Well, it won't work. I'm giving you a raise when I feel like it, and not before. Well, then. Uh, never mind well, then. We both know what well, then means. <laughs> What is well then, then? Well then means you're going to threaten to ring John Laws and tell him me, but we both know you're not going to do it. I will so too. Betty, you haven't got the nerve to ring him. And even if you do get the nerve... Oh, uh, what will you do? I'll hit you over the nose with a rolled up newspaper. <laughs> with a spanner inside. <laughs> Look, Betty, how about some coffee? Mr. Kelly, I do not get paid enough to go traipsing around after you making coffee. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. You're not going to drag me into that again. I will make the coffee, and I do not expect to be paid any extra money for doing it. Well, don't put three teaspoons of sugar in my mouth. <laughs> do not. You do so too. Well, just consider yourself lucky I'm making the coffee for you. <laughs> Oh, sometimes I wonder who's the boss around here. My kids ignore me. My secretary won't make coffee. <laughs> oh, isn't that typical? Why don't they ever turn off the radio when they leave the room? Hello. Hello? It's Lawsy. Hello. Hello. Oh, get on with it. Hello. Is this me? <laughs> well, look, it certainly isn't me, darling, so I assume it's you, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look, we've, we've done that. Could we move on, please? Is that you, Mr. Laws? <sighs> Just stop and think about it a moment, sweetheart. You have rung what is commonly known as the John Law Show. Who did you expect to answer the telephone? Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, I've rung you before. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think I do. It's uh, Betty, isn't it? God, not oh, another one. There's a whole tribe of Bettys all over Sydney and they're all ringing John Laws. God, it's Betty. God, we're knee-deep in idiots. And, uh, Betty, what's the problem this time, darling? She won't know. I don't know. Told you so. <laughs> I imagine. Ring me about something. What is it? Oh, I'm, I'm just nervous. She's worse than my bed. Is it, uh, is it that boss of yours again? Still won't give you the money, huh? Yes, that's Yeah, right. good for him. <laughs> is, he, is he there? Betty, maybe if I could, uh... Speak to him, you know, do they? No, he's out in the kitchen making coffee. <laughs> We're all doing it. Sounds like a pretty nice fellow. No, he'll put three teaspoons of sugar in. He always does. Oh, damn. Sorry. <laughs> Just a minute. Becky, I know what you're doing. You better stop it now. <laughs> so, it was you. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. No, what wasn't? Uh, it wasn't me talking to John Laws on the radio. Right. I warned you. Well, where? Going? I'm going to get a newspaper and a spanner. There you go. Uh, Simon, what's wrong? Why are you helping me? Because you're my sister and that's what big brothers are for. Since when? Since just now. And besides, all this art stuff interests me. Oh, you've got to be joking. I mean, you couldn't even name three artists. Of course I could. Go on, then. Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo Ferrari and Leonardo Maserati. <laughs> The last two are cars. Yeah, but they're all French. <laughs> so anyway, when is this exhibition your class is putting on? It's on Thursday and you're not coming. Well, I want to see all the paintings. You just want to see all the girls in my class and chat them up. So, what's wrong with that? It's embarrassing. Why? 
because they actually like you, and I can't cope with that. <laughs> well, what's the point of having a sister if you want to let me chat up a friend? <laughs> anyway, which one of these are you going to enter in the exhibition? Well, that's what I'm trying to decide, but uh, I can only enter one, but I want it to be my best. Hey, how about this one? Why do you like that one in particular? It's the only one with a girl in it. <laughs> You're a big help. Oh, Simon, I'll Debbie. <laughs> What are all these? They're paintings. Oh, they're really good. Well, when are you going to finish them? <laughs> they are finished. Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew that, yeah. Uh, how do you do it, Deb? You mean painting? Yeah, it's a real gift, isn't it? Oh, you think so? Yeah, I mean, you take something, paint it, and make it look nothing like it. <laughs> it's got a point there, you know. I mean, take this one. What about it? It looks exactly like nothing. <laughs> That's an impression. Oh, I see. Hey, have you got any of Bob Hawke? He's good to do impressions of. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> my dear Australians. <laughs> Very funny. Oh. Hey, this is good. What is? This one you painted upside down. It's not upside down. It looks upside down. I'm telling you, it is not upside down. Well, why'd you sign it upside down? <laughs> <laughs> no, I look better the other way. Nudge, you know nothing about art. Maybe so, but I know what I like. What's that? Food. <laughs> Is any around? <laughs> Betty, who are you reading? No, I'm Mrs. Kelly. Oh, I heard you pick up the phone just then. I was, I was, I was uh, just cleaning it. You were not. You, you were going to ring John Laws again. A little bird told me. What little bird? Beaver the owl. <laughs> Don't be silly. Beaver at the owl only does long distance. <laughs> Never mind. Look, I have warned you this morning. Touch that phone and you're an ex-Betty. Beg yours? A late Betty. According to your mother's name. Anyway. What was that? Never mind. And while we're on the subject of phone calls, how many times have you called John Lords? <sighs> Mr. Kelly, we have not established that it was I. <laughs> All right. Very well, then. A hypothetical Betty, whose identity shall remain unknown, has been calling John Lords. How many times has she done it? Twelve. <laughs> How could you do that? Because you deserved it. Aha, uh -huh. so it was you then? Uh, I, I didn't say that. I just said you deserved it. And anyway, I didn't mention your name. Good. Yet. Betty, don't you dare ever mention my name on the radio. Well, we all know how to prevent this happening, don't you? All right then, go on, fine. You, ring him up. Go on, tell everybody my name. I don't care. So there. Don't you touch the phone. Hey, Dad. Oh, hi, Deb. You're home early. Yeah, I was just trying to work out which painting to put in the exhibition. Now, I've got it down to two, but I need another opinion. Oh, let's see. Wow, I like that one. Right, that's the one, then. Oh, no, hang on. What hang on? Well, you're putting it in to sell, aren't you? That's the general idea. Yeah, well, I want to keep that one. I've always liked it. Yeah, well, so have I. But you do agree that it's my best one. Yeah, but don't you want to keep it? Yeah, but if it's my best one, then it's my best chance of getting a sale. Well, oh, what's so important about getting a sale? Dad, every year in this exhibition, there are paintings left unsold. Now, if that happens to me, I'd be absolutely devastated. Why? Because it just hangs there all day, saying to everyone, this is a lousy painting. But I just couldn't bear that. All right, look, problem solved. Now, we both want to keep it, but you want to sell it, right? Right. OK, well, you enter it in the exhibition, and I'll buy it. Don't you dare. <laughs> what am I saying? Dad, that's even worse. Who do you think eventually buys these unsold paintings? I don't know. The kids' parents buy them. I mean, it's the ultimate degradation. I mean, everyone knows they're just buying them because they feel sorry for the kids. Yeah, but I don't feel sorry for you. I genuinely want the painting, and my money's as good as anybody else's. Well, you're not to buy it. I'd be really ashamed if you did that to me. Well, Deborah, you can't stop me buying it. Well, yes, I can, because you're not coming to the exhibition. Now I forbid it. What? Hang on. I do all the forbidding around here. <laughs> not that it does me much good. See you later, Ned. Mm, yeah. Oh, you're a bit late, aren't you? Oh, we'll make it. Yeah, make sure you do. Well, what's the radio for, Mr. Kelly? Oh, I'm checking on Betty. She called in sick, but I know she's going to ring John Laws again. Dad, why don't you just give her the raise? Oh, look, I'm going to. I was always going to give her a raise, but before I could, she started John Laws. So what? So I want her to know the raise is coming from me, not from John Laws. Dad, you've been spending too much time with Betty. You're developing Betty brain. <laughs> why don't you just give her the raise? I mean, what's the matter who it's from? Yeah, I suppose you're right. I'll tell her tomorrow. Okay. See you later then. Oh, hang on. There's something you can do for me. Look, Debbie won't let me go to the exhibition tonight, but I really want that painting. Could you buy it for me? No. 
Oh, well, thank you very much. She won't let me go either. Why not? She has this ridiculous notion that I'll try to chat up her friends. Well, why would she think that? Because he always does. <laughs> well, you're a great help. Oh, nudge. Look, here's some money. Oh, thanks, Mr. K. <laughs> is, is this from you or John Laws? Oh, shut up. Now, look, you go to the exhibition tonight and you buy the painting. Oh, you mean like a dealer? Yeah. Well, what do I get? What? What do you get? What commission do I get? 10%, 20%? Please? You'll get 100% of a brick in the back of your head. Now get going. And don't come back without the painting. Most imitated radio program, The John Lawrence Show. Hello. Hello? It's me again. It's her again. It's you. Yeah, remember me? Darling, remember you. This is the 15th time that you've called me 15? up. 15? She told me 12. Don't I listen know, to her. She's a liar. You do want give me the pain. Well... Listen to me, sweetheart. If, if you stop calling me and you started talking to him, then he might give you the raise. I'm going to. Oh. Listen to me. Listen oh. to me. Well, why would he do that? To shut you up, I imagine. <laughs> if you work for me, I would. I could talk. Well, I'd like to, but what do you expect me to do? Come around there and smack him in the ear? Oh, could you? I saw you in for the night, then. Betty, could you just do one thing for me? What? Go away. <laughs> Don't ever bring me again. Get on, you lousy. You can fix anything. <laughs> What's keeping Nudge? And have you thought that Debbie's going to be mad when she finds out you bought her painting? Well, let her be. The important thing is that in the war between men and women, I have won another battle, and I get to keep the painting I wanted. I hear they come now. Dad, you'll never believe it. My painting was the first one sold. No, darling, that's wonderful. Uh, do you know who bought it? No, I didn't see it. It was already claimed when I got there. But look who I ran into. Nudge was there. Oh, what a surprise. Yes, yeah, so I wonder what he was doing there. Let's ask him, shall we? Nudge, what were you doing there? I bought this painting. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I didn't realise he was serious when he said he was interested in art. Nudge, you've bought the wrong painting. Yeah, but it's good, bud. Well, why didn't you buy Debbie's? Dad! Because it was too late and it was already sold, so I bought this one. But it seems to speak to me, and Debbie said if I liked it, then it was a good painting. Well, how much did it cost you? Five bucks. Here's the rest of your money back, Mr. Gillen. Dad! Oh, it was a lend, it was a lend. No, you don't understand. Why'd you spend five bucks buying this painting? Well, Simon, I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. So? So I like apples. Oh. <laughs> oh, Betty, Betty. Betty, Betty, I don't know why you're here, but thank goodness you are. Look, I've got something to say. Mr. I know Kelly, I should have said it to you. I hope you don't mind, but there's someone here who wants to see you. What? Oh, it's late at this time of night? Oh. <laughs> it's, it's John Laws. Is your name Kelly? Uh, yes. For God's sake, would you give this woman... Arise. But I was going to. I know you were going to, but do it now. I want to see it. Give her the light. All right, here you are, Betty. Oh, Mr. Kelly, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Look, why, why are you doing this? Why am I doing it? I talk to prime ministers. I talk to leaders of state. I talk to fat people and thin people and mad people and rich people and poor people, but never in my entire life have I had to talk to anybody. <laughs> she has ruined my life. Yeah, I know how you feel. Well, you work with her every day, don't you? Yeah. Well, give yourself a raise. <laughs> That's very nice. Oh, oh, do you want to buy it? Well, how much do you want for it? I'll let you have it for what I paid, 20 bucks. <laughs> Okay, all right, you got yourself a deal. Uh, you don't really like that painting, do you? Do I like the painting? I hate the painting. It's the worst painting I've ever seen in my life. But I love the frame. These frames are worth an awful lot of money these days. <laughs>
show is recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network. He's got page 43. Hello, hello. This is your father, rent payer, and all-round good guy speaking. <laughs> Who's got page 43? Sit down. Who's got page 43? Oh, look, this happens every week. I've told you and told you, don't split up the papers. Here I am halfway through the story about the scout mistress and the choir boy, and it says turn to page 43. <laughs> and who's got... Who's got what? Page 43. I've got to find out about the scout mistress and the choir boy. Dad, you know what happened. It's the same story as last week about the choir master and the girl guide. What do you mean? Well, it's the same story every week. They just changed the cast. Yeah, it's always from Stuttgart. And it's about the scout mistress and the choir boy. Or the choir master and the girl guide. Or the vicar and the postmistress. <laughs> it's always the same. Yeah, the villagers are always shocked. And it always comes as a surprise. He seems such a nice person, said the postmistress through her tears. <gasps> it's the same story every week, Dad. Have you finished? I think so. Yeah. Good. Then give me page 43. I, I want to read about the sobbing postmistress myself. Uh, here you go, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> oh, nudge, for heaven's sake, that's the Phantom. Oh, that's all right. I've finished with it. <laughs> well, I don't want to read it. The Phantom doesn't fool around with postmistresses. I should think not. <laughs> Besides, they don't have postmistresses in the jungle. Yeah, they have talking drums. Oh, yeah? Who do they talk to? To each other. Mr. Kelly, it's a well-known fact that you hit the talking drums and the message is printed in the sky above. See? <laughs> so if I want to get in touch with a phantom, I've got to call him on the talking drums? Yeah. Have you got his drum number? What for? I want to ask him over so he can beat your head in. <laughs> oh, look, I give up. I'm going to get some lunch. Anyone want me? Oh, yeah. We'll make your own. It'll build your character. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I made myself smile. Deborah, do you know where the bread is? By the sink? No. Uh, in the cupboard? No. Under the bench? No. Oh, hang on. Come in here a minute. What is it? Deborah, I asked you, did you know where the bread was? I didn't ask you to guess at possible locations. <laughs> I mean, I can guess all by myself. Well, I'm sorry. Well, if I ask you, do you know where the bread is and you don't know, the answer is, I don't know. Well, in that case, I don't know. I mean, why should I know? You're always picking on me, Dad. Just because I'm a girl, I'm supposed to know where the bread is. No, you're supposed to know because you're the person who was asked to put away four loaves yesterday. Oh, that bread. Yes. I know you're confused. I know you thought I was talking about the neighbour's bread. There you go. Oh, great. Look, it's frozen solid. Why'd you put all four loaves in the freezer? Well, otherwise it'd go stale. Well, couldn't you leave one out for us to use? Look, I didn't know which one you wanted to eat first. <laughs> I mean, look at this. I can tile the roof with these. <laughs> toast it. No, I don't want a toasted sandwich. I want a fresh bread sandwich. Besides, when you toast it, <laughs> the water melts and it goes all soggy. How old are you? What? Well, I mean, you're making more fuss than Jenny over a simple little thing like a frozen piece of bread. Well, I don't like hard bread. Well, then just leave it out a few minutes. It'll thaw. No, but it'll still be all cold. I mean, it'll be like eating ham and onion ice cream. <laughs> Microwave. Ah, now you're talking sense. Deborah, we haven't got a microwave. <laughs> of course we have. It's in the laundry. That's a tumble dryer. Is it? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done the pizza in it then. <laughs> you put the pizza in the tumble dryer? Oh, God. Two, three, four, five. You were jagging, weren't you? Bingo. Oh, stop it. What stop it? Stop that stuff. What are you talking about? There, you did it again. Do you know what he's talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it's the way you pfft your hair out of your eyes. Oh, what, you mean this? Yeah, drives me mad. All right, I won't do it. 
Ah, ah. Gotcha. You did it again. Dad, I have to do it to read the top half of the page. Well, look, why don't you cut it? You get angry when I cut your magazines. Not the magazines. Cut your hair. I like it this way. Oh, how could you? You look like a Maltese terrier. <laughs> oh, she did it again. Oh, doesn't that drive you mad? Oh, you mean the way she goes <laughs> with her hair? Yeah. No. Oh, let me see you do it, Dad. Uh, now that you mention it, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> typical, typical. He's bored. I know. Dad, look, if you're bored, will you find something to do? Me find something to do? What about you? It's a beautiful day out there. Which one? What which one? Which day is it out there? <laughs> Sunday, of course. Well, that's the same one as we're having in here. <laughs> Shut up. Look, why don't you get out in God's fresh air and, and kick, kick a football? football. <laughs> exactly. Dad, don't be so sexist. Sexist? What? Sexist. Ooh. I mean, you never go out and say, go out in God's fresh air and paint your nails, or go out in God's fresh air and hem a dress. Yeah, or go out in God's fresh air and clean your ears out. <laughs> That's revolting. There. Problem solved. Oh, well, how does that solve the problem? Because now God's fresh air can come in here and read the paper with us. <laughs> well, anyway, I've got to go. Oh, where are you off to? Tiff's wife. Oh, can I come? Oh, you really must be bored. Yeah, can I come? No. Oh, go on, I'll be good. Forget it, Dad. I'm helping Tiff with a debut dress. Oh, well, I can do that. Dad, go and do something male and macho. Go down to the hardware store and buy a packet of nails or something. <laughs> well, I would, but they closed at one. Well, you're not coming with me. By the way, Simon, Tiff said there's another debut practice tomorrow night. Yeah, OK. Oh, that's right. You're going to be a partner, aren't you? Mm. I'm enjoying it, actually. Oh, uh, anyone asked you to be a partner, Nudge? Nah, who'd ask me, Mr Kelly? Oh, well. Oh, uh, anyone like a coffee? Uh, no thanks. No, thanks. No. Uh, here we are, mate. The problem page. Have you got yours? Yeah, okay, got it. Hit me with one of yours. Hang on, I'll find a good one. Oh, beauty. Here goes. I'm a good-looking guy of 19, and people say I'm a hunk. <laughs> but, but I have this strange desire to put on my mother's bra and steal underwear from the <laughs> Is this unusual? Well, it could be the reason why no one will be your debut partner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. We're just reading the problem pages. Hey, here's one. A friend of mine's got this problem. <laughs> a friend of mine. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> well, it's the oldest line in the book. They always say, a friend of mine has this problem. I bet it's a girl. Yeah, it is. Girls always say that. They always say, a friend of mine has this problem, and it's their problem. Is it? Yeah, of course. It's like if I say, a friend of mine is a little bit pregnant, when I really mean I'm a little bit pregnant. <laughs> and, and you worry about me wearing my mother's bra? <laughs> I'm creating. I am creating the world's greatest curry. You are? I are. But don't tell anyone, otherwise the hordes will swarm in here for it, and there'll be a queue halfway around the block. <laughs> Dad, why can't we be like normal, everyday, God-fearing Australians? Of what do you speak? Well, then why can't we have takeaways on Sunday nights? Everybody else does. But if you want a curry on a Sunday night, you should get a takeaway curry. I'll pop down to curry in a hurry and get one. Oh! Wash your mouth out. Anyway, if you got a takeaway curry, Nudge would smell it and follow you home. Point. Ah, so how was your day with Tiff? Oh, great. It was just like old times. Oh, you got on well together? No, we had a fight. Oh, you had a tiff tiff. <laughs> I was doing her nails and I got a tiny bit on her jeans. Just a dad. She's gonna dob on me to a mother. Oh, well, no wonder you had a tiff tiff. She was gonna dob on dead because of a dad. Uh, out. Oh, well, I can't help it. I'm in a good mood. Oh, you should have seen the girls, Dad. They're going to look terrific in their dresses. Yeah, look, Deb, I was just thinking, are you sure you don't want to make your debut with them? No, it's not my scene, Dad. You know me, I'm only comfortable in jeans. I mean, I can't really see myself dressed up in white for a debut. Well, you could wear white jeans. <laughs> yeah, besides, it'll be too late to find another partner. That reminds me, I've got to ask Nudge. Hang on, hang on. You're not going to make your debut, but you're going to ask Nudge to be your partner? No, it's not for me, it's for Gina. Tiff lined her up a date, but uh, he backed out at the last minute. Oh, why? He met her. Oh, so she's not exactly Raquel Welsh then? No, but she's, she's got, got a terrific, terrific personality. personality. <laughs> Did you know I was going to say that? Look, Deb, any woman who's ever lined up a blind date has used that line. Are you sure you're being fair to Nudge? Well, I'll ask him, and then he can always say no. Besides, he'll have a good time. He'll be fed. <laughs> fair enough. Hmm. So, what'd you do today? Oh, well, Simon and Nudge got fed up with me being bored, so they asked me to do something. What? I wouldn't repeat it. <laughs> oh, uh, but you'll never guess what I did. You went and looked at cars. I went and looked at cars. How did you know I was going to say that? You always do when you're bored. What'd you find this time? Ah, come and have a look. I've got the brochure. Come and see. I really, really love it. What is it? It's a Tavarich. A 
to what, which? A tovarich. It's a Russian four-wheel drive. It's great, huh? What? <laughs> you wouldn't be kidding. Hi, Dad. Hi, Deb. Simon, you'll never guess what Dad wants to buy this time. What? A tovarich. Sounds like a Hungarian sausage. What is it? <laughs> it's a Russian four-wheel drive. I'd rather have a Hungarian sausage. Dad, you didn't put a deposit down, did you? No. You didn't sign anything, did you? No. I thought maybe, perhaps, I might purchase one. I mean, it's not a crime, is it? <sighs> Dad, why do you want a Russian car? It's great. Look at the brochure. You call this a brochure? It's typed on a used bit of paper. <laughs> it's like they did wrap sausages in it. Oh, ah, well, you see, the Russians are very clever. They don't waste money on all these glossy brochures. All the value's in the vehicle. Dad, tell us one good thing about a Russian four-wheel drive. It's cheap. You should never let him out by himself. Dad, why do you want a four-wheel drive? Well, look, I thought it was about time I changed my image. I might want to go off-road. <laughs> when? When would you ever go off-road in a car? Every weekend. <laughs> when? When every weekend? When I park it on the nature strip to wash it. <laughs> Morning, Betty. Morning, Mr. Kelly. Oh, Betty, could you copy those letters for me, please? Oh. That's mine. Uh, I wanted to make a copy of it. Well, what would you want to make a copy of that for? Well, the dealer only had one photograph and he wanted it back, so I had to make a copy of it. The dealer? <gasps> You're not going to buy one of those? Well, I was thinking about it, yes. But it's ugly. <laughs> it's not ugly, it's functional, and it's a four-wheel drive. So? So, it's my ticket to freedom. Uh, I can see me every weekend, getting away from it all, blazing a trail where no man has gone before. Where? Well... On the nature strip? <laughs> anyway, why am I telling you about four-wheel drives? You've all got them in the country. No, we don't. You don't? No. Dad says they're too high. Ute's much better. Better for what? For conversations. I'm sorry, I think I missed something along the way here. I... Well, you know, when you stop to have a chat with someone in the country, you've got to have something to lean on. So? So? A ute's just the right leaning height for your elbow. You can lean on either side and chat. <laughs> if you had one of those, you'd have to keep jumping up every time it was your turn to speak. <laughs> You mean you purchase vehicles on the basis of whether you can lean on them for a chat? Yeah. Well, it's not like the city. I mean, we can't just lean on the back fence and chat to our neighbours like you can in the city. Why not? Well, because you've got to work, walk 17 miles to the nearest back fence. Mm, well... And by the time you got there, you'd have forgotten why you went there in the first place. Yeah, well, And besides, anyway. you've got to ring them up first to talk to them and tell you why you're coming. And then, you know, I mean, if you're going to talk to them on the phone, you might as well talk to them there anyway. Oh, Betty, for I God's mean, sake, really shut talking. up! You're talking absolute nonsense! <laughs> Since you're the one who wants to buy an ugly little car. <laughs> Look, if I want to buy a Tavarich, I'll buy a Tavarich. Why would you want to buy a Hungarian sausage? <laughs> it's not a Hungarian sausage, it's a Russian four-wheel drive vehicle. <gasps> you're not even going to buy a Russian car. What's wrong with Russian cars? Whoa, you never get parts. <laughs> it's like that sort of about Volkswagens. What? What did your father say about Volkswagens? What? Well, what if we have a war with Germany? You know, I mean, you never get parts. Betty, the last war with Germany finished in 1945. Well? We won it. They have to give us parts. <laughs> well, well, what if we have a war with the Russians? Betty, if we have a war with the Russians, the last thing I'm going to be worried about is getting spare parts for the car. I mean, the car itself will be a molten lump that glows in the dark. Yeah, and you know when that'll happen? When? Right after the warranty expires. <laughs> Hi, Deb. Uh, is Simon around? No, he's at debut practice with Tiff. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He won't be long. Oh, OK. Uh, Nudge, I need to ask you a favour. Yeah? Well, see, this friend of mine has a problem. A friend of yours? Yeah. <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a problem. That's right. This friend of yours. <laughs> yeah, I thought I said that. Anyway, listen. How tall is she? Hey? Oh, about my height? <laughs> <laughs> thought so. Anyway, uh, what's your problem? Nudge, it's not my problem. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, OK, well, then what's your friend's problem? Well, it's a bit embarrassing. Oh, there's no need to be embarrassed. Well, she needs a partner for the debutante's ball. She wants me to take her? Yeah, how about it? Yeah, well, after all, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, well, listen, uh, this, uh, friend of yours... <laughs> yeah? Do you reckon there might be any chance that she might fancy me? 
bit. Oh, yeah, I reckon there's every chance. Thought so. Yeah, well, listen, you'll have a lovely time with her. Well, you tell her <laughs> that I fancy her too. Oh, sure. Listen, it's Friday night, so be ready, OK? Yeah. Oh, I'm dead, but uh, don't forget to tell your friend <laughs> that uh, I'll take her. Well, I'll ring her now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, clean up your dancing shoes, will you? <laughs> What's he talking about? Very warm. I will tell him. Who was that, Betty? That was your friends, the godless Russians. <laughs> Betty, they're not godless Russians. They're car dealers. Monsignor said that they were godless Russians. And it's good enough for me. All right, all right. What did he say? He said that any country that turns its back on the church has got Not anything the Monsignor, the godless Russian. What did he say? Oh, oh he said your car would be ready to test on Saturday. Oh, great, they've got one. Ha, ha, the only one in the country and I'll be the first to test drive it. Oh, Mr Kelly, I must protest strongly. <laughs> Monsignor said that their aim is world domination. Betty, blow it out your ear. <laughs> Remember that her is an impressionable you. Oh, what can I do for you, Nudge? Uh, uh, Mr. Kelly, could I have a word with you in private, please? Yeah, well, there's only Betty here. Yeah. Yeah, well, anything you have to say will go in one head and out the other. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> ah, okay, then. Right, now, what did you have to say? I'm all ears. And, and I'm all heads. <laughs> That's a good one, Betty. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, you know how I'm going to this ball? Yeah, I'd heard something about that. And, and you know I'm going with a, a friend of Debbie's, don't you? Yeah, she mentioned that. Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. And, and you don't mind? Well, why should I? Well, I, I just uh, wondered if you thought this uh, friend of Debbie's father uh, would approve of me. Well, why shouldn't he? I mean, you're a pleasant enough fellow. You're honest. You don't leave your socks in the sink. You don't clean your toes with a butter knife. Well, not at the table anyway. <laughs> Taken all round, you're a pretty presentable person. But, Nudge, there is just one thing. Oh, God, what does the Monsignor have to say about Nudge? <laughs> seriously. Now, Nudge, you've got to remember to chew every mouthful 32 times. Do I? <laughs> Betty, if Nudge had to chew every mouthful 32 times, we'd need a 50-hour day. <laughs> anyway, Mr Kelly... Anyway, look, Nudge, why are you concerned about this, this father's approval? Well, I have it on pretty good authority that... She fancies me, and this, this relationship might just blossom into something more long-term. Well, that'd be wonderful, Nudge. Oh, I'd be so thrilled for you, Nudge. <laughs> and should that happen, I'll be the first to congratulate you. Yeah, well, it's, it's time to stop playing the field and settle down a bit. Yeah, well, good thinking, Nudge. Yeah, well, thanks for the advice, Mr Kelly. I feel a hell of a lot better about things now. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> yeah, well, so would I if I knew what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> Oh, Nudge, there you are. Oh, uh, 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 Debbie, I've just spoken with your father and he said it's all right with him if it's all right with me. Did he? Yeah. Fine. Well, um, I guess it's all right with me then, too. Listen, can you waltz? Waltz? Oh, you mean that dance where you go one, two, three, one, two, three? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to teach you then. You're going to have to do it at the ball. Oh, we have to do the waltz? Yeah, all the Debs and their partners will be doing it. All the other Debs? Yeah. A and my Deb? Yeah. Look, I'll be your partner. I know. Right. Now, put your hand here. That's it. Now, just hold me a bit closer. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Nudge, not quite that close. I still have to breathe. <laughs> That's better. Now. One, two, three. Four, five, six. <laughs> Four, five, six. When do we get to the next part? Which next part? Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> no, I think we'll just stick with one, two, three. Oh. Right, now. One, two, three. One, two, three. You're not bad at this. Oh, yes, I'm a natural. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ali, you're still a bit too standoffish. Just oh. snuggle in a bit closer. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Now, just hold me. <laughs> Hold me gently. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, like this? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really nice. I thought so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's nice. Gina will love this. Who's Gina? My friend. What friend? My friend that you take him to the ball. <laughs> you mean I really am taking a friend of yours? Yeah, who do you think you were taking? Well, I thought I was going to be oh, taking... Oh, you'll have a great time with Jenny. She's a lovely girl. Look, I'll ring her now and tell her how well you're doing. Oh, Nudge, thanks again. You're really sweet. Yeah, yeah, really sweet. Hey, it's the Leyland brothers back from their test drive. How'd it go, Dad? You tell her. I don't want to talk about it. Hey, that's mine. Yeah, you would have loved it. So, how'd it go, Dad? Uh, is that ugly little car any good? Deb, do you know how many Tavaraches there are in Australia? Yeah, Dad told me there's one. Not anymore. <laughs> Dad, what happened? He ripped the sump out of it. <laughs> you did it! Is that bad? <laughs> it's the worst. Oh, well, how did he do that? Look, all I wanted to do was try a little bit of off-road driving, that's all. So you hit a ditch or a tree stump? No, I hit the gutter. <laughs> I was trying to put that ugly little vehicle up onto the nature strip. Let this be a lesson to you. Oh, shut up. Yeah, Dad, we warned you, didn't we? I mean, you were crazy to want to rush in four-wheel drive. Yes, I know you did, and I was right. Good morning, everyone. Nudge, it's only breakfast. There's no need to dress formal. Oh, no, I'm just on my way home from the ball. <laughs> At ten o'clock in the morning? Yeah, yeah, Gina and I made a night of it. No, her parents will kill you. No, they were with us. They're really nice people, and Gina's a great girl. I knew you'd like her. Yeah, well, see, I realise that beauty is more than skin deep. So, what did you like about her? Her sense of humour, personality? Yeah, all that. Plus, she had hidden qualities as well. Oh, yeah? What hidden qualities? Yeah, father owns an all-night pizza parlour. <laughs> I think I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> 